what's going on everybody welcome back to another painting video i hope everybody's doing well and doing well in their painting and having uh, great uh, success and improvement i thought today i would do another windmill painting from my last one i was on a little bit of a they're, they're a little addicting to do i think so similar start here wet the paper and we're doing some raw sienna here and we're going to do more of a orangey brown type theme pattern here a little bit more raw sienna here and i'm mixing it with a little cad yellow to make it more orangey we're going to leave a little of that center again open for for light and as we go, we'll progressively darken it. I'm just adding a little color to the bottom for later. Going to have a little bit of some, somewhat of a plane there. And then add a little bit of burnt umber. I added, I think, a little Van Dyke brown here. And we're just going to darken up just to create a little bit of a cloud pattern. Just quickly dabbing in a little bit while it's still wet. And I'm just going to take a little bit on the horizon here where there's going to be the area where the windmills will sit. Again, a little bit of brown. I had used a little bit too much yellow there. A little bit of brown. And I'm just taking a wet or somewhat dry hake, no paint on it. And I'm just dabbing in a little just to create some a little bit of cloud here. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. tell when it dries just kind of blotting out some of the some of the paint a little darker areas toward the bottom just to enhance the cloud okay a quick dry by the way I edit out those dries so you don't have to sit through it but just for a couple minutes Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put in, the paper's still a little bit wet, just putting in some little distant buildings, just some things sort of in the background. I did this in the last one too. This time I'm using a little bit of the same brown colors from the sky. Just trying to keep a theme going so you don't get too many different colors going. Just some shapes in the distance. And let's put some little vertical things on top. Steeples, antennas, whatever they end up being or appearing as. I'm taking the uh, medium size hake brush and I'm just got the hairs very loose on there and just dabbing in some some grass here. Progressively getting darker because I wanted it to be like a plain, like a field. Sort of like a wheat field, I guess. Not necessarily wheat, but that same idea. That's what I had in my mind before I started. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to start putting in the windmills now with a large flat brush. And I'm using, again, the same sort of color scheme. And I'm not really mixing it too much on the brush. I just wanted a little bit of variety there. And I don't mind if there's a little separation in the hairs. I think that creates a little uh, realism there. So there's your first windmill, that easy really to put in the basic building. And then we're going to just do a smaller one a little further back. And that's it. That's simple. Just a side pull of the brush. Now I'm going to go to a smaller flat brush. And we're just going to do a dome on these. You can do a pointy roof, whatever looks acceptable to you. And just a smaller one here. And just a little pointy thing sticking up top. It just seems like something that would be there. I'm not even sure if it's on the uh, on a windmill or not. Just a little dry brush. With some darker brown there. Obviously, these little details aren't as fast and loose, but uh, they're necessary sometimes. So I'm taking that same flat brush again. Last time I used the hake brush, and I want to see what happens this time. I'm going to use this flat brush. Again, I don't mind if there's little separations in the brush. And I'm going to make the fins, and I'm going to make them straight on this time, as opposed to that sort of side view I used last time. Same colors again, just sticking with that theme of the light red burnt umber little ultramarine blue almost sort of a limited palette little Payne's gray just darkening up these fins a little bit so they stand out against the light and we're just making a use of every part of the brush just just the edge the fine edge making it work for us. Even its flaws, which would be the separations in the hairs, make that work for us. You'd think you'd want it perfect. Back again to the medium hake brush with some darker. This time I believe I've mixed a little Van Dyke brown and some Payne's gray in here. Just to darken up the, the field there. A little bit of ultramarine blue as I come down, I'm just making things a little bit darker. Just a couple little sweeps down there just to sort of complete the bottom. Okay, just going to do little uh, some little twiggy type trees sticking up just to create a little bit of interest there for ground and kind of show how big these windmills are too. And it pushes back those buildings a little bit that are in the distance. These are fun to do. I hope you try it. A 
I'm just putting some minor little details in here. Probably not even really necessary, but just to define it a little bit. individual little sticks. Okay, I'm gonna put a little fence in here. I did this on the last one. I thought it was a nice little accent. Just a little country fence going across. Same thing on this side, just a just a quick little with the rigor brush. I've probably done more detail in this than I've done in most of my other paintings. It's not that tedious, though. It, it's fun, really. Sometimes details can get so tedious and you're spending hours on one painting. And it's anything but relaxing. But some people are relaxed by taking their time and, you know, doing things precision being meticulous with things. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. And I'm just going to create some sweeps down toward the foreground area here. I'm coming back with just a little bit of light red just to warm it up a little bit so it's not too much. I probably overdid the foreground a little bit, but hopefully it contrasts nicely with that light in there. You let me know what you think. It's too dark, it's too muddy, whatever. You know, you try things and you want to see, does this going to work? Is that going to work? You can try doing a tonal drawing. Even that's not going to tell you the, the, the full story. Sometimes you paint it and, you know, you get the... You can just tell when you're going along, hey, this is going to be something special. But in these pictures, the light is really the thing that really draws you in. You see that light in the middle pulls you in the dark, the light, and then you look and you see the windmills and I think it's a nice, uh, nice effect. We're closing in on the end. I'm just touching up a couple little things with the flat brush. Paint ran down just a little bit there. Of course, you can do yours flat. You don't have to do yours on this much of an angle. I just find it easier when I'm videoing and I've, I've gotten used to it too, just painting this way. When I first started, I was doing totally on a, on a table just maybe a slight elevation but I've found over time it's just easier to paint just vertically like this so yeah I don't know how the weather is by you guys but we got some heavy ice on the roof and stuff and I can as I'm recording I can hear it falling off the house it's kind of uh, startling I've had a pretty good blast here in the Midwest especially early for this time period a little door on here just as just a little bit of a door there you can put in a window you can scratch in a window I thought I'd do a little door this time just flicking in a little wet water so that door isn't so hard-edged and we're closing in on another uh, another completed painting I hope you guys liked this hope you enjoyed it please comment course subscribe just doing a little touch-ups here with my flat brush here just to accent a few things across but that's really it I appreciate you uh, watching let's zoom in and take a closer look so here it is the finished painting I've used my black mat I'm cutting off a little bit of the edge um, because my black mat's smaller this is an 11 by 15 size I think but there it is finished painting Again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll put it in the uh, frame program and we'll take a look at it. And that's it. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.